What's up guys? So as you guys may know, I just finished my PC build series in which I unboxed and reviewed every part I used in it and made a time-lapse build as well. So if you guys are interested in any of that, then make sure to click the link in the description below for the playlist. Today, I want to help you guys choose the parts for your first PC. And to do that, I'm going to go through all of my PC parts and explain the reasoning behind why I chose each one and what you should get. But first, before we get into the parts list, you need to first identify why you're even building a PC. Is it for gaming? Video editing? Work? For fun? You need to know this before you start doing anything, because it'll establish what level of performance you want. For each part, I'm going to be going over who should buy each level of component, such as who should buy an i3 or an i5. So let's jump right in. First of all, even before you choose a CPU, you need to ask yourself, do you want a GPU? If you are a gamer, then of course you would want one. But for many others, a GPU is completely unnecessary. If you don't want a GPU, then the CPU choice would be an easy one. You would want to go to Intel because it has integrated graphics and that will always be cheaper than a Ryzen plus a graphics card. And for everyone else who does want a GPU, what do you go with? Intel or Ryzen? On the mainstream platform, this choice is actually quite simple. Looking at it from a money perspective, if you want the best bang for buck, then just go with Ryzen. On a performance point of view, if you guys are going to use this PC for gaming or just daily work tests such as Microsoft Offices, then you guys should go with Intel. If you guys want a powerful editing rig or workstation PC, then go with Ryzen. Pretty much, single threaded equals Intel, multi thread equals Ryzen. Soul gamers should just go straight to Intel. People planning to stream, however, may want to consider Ryzen. Content creators, on the other hand, should go with either depending on how often they create content. Everyone else should just go with Intel because it's still the better option for most users due to its Excel and single threader applications. It's as simple as that. If you have a specific use case in here, then make sure to post in the comments down below and I'll tell you what I think about it. Once you've chosen which one of those you want, let's dive into which level to get. Only get the Ryzen 3 or Intel i3 if you are on a very tight budget. Most people should go with Ryzen 5 or Intel i5. This gives almost everyone abundant power and it is plenty for gaming. The only reason you should go with Ryzen 7 or Intel i7 is because you want the absolute best on the mainstream platform. The 5 series is more than re enough really. There may be a few of you who actually need the 7 series and you guys know who you are. The i7-8700K is the best gaming CPU out there, so if that's what you want, then that is what you should get. This should cover almost everyone. For the super power users, if you guys have a big business and make a quite a bit of money from your PC, then don't skimp out and just go with Skylake X and Intel even though it's more expensive. If you guys make some money from your PC, but not that much, then you guys should just stick to Threadripper. All of you guys who want to go for an enthusiast line just because you want the best, then don't, because it's really pointless. I knew I wanted to get into YouTube videos and I really wanted that speed of the 7 series provided and of course I wanted the best, and that is why I went the, with the Intel i7-8700K. Next, as for the CPU cooler, this is very simple as well. Unless you are building a top level build, then just go with the air cooler. Air coolers give almost the same if not the same overclocking headroom as a water cooler. So just save your money and go with an air cooler. I got the Corsair H100 IV2 for quite a good deal and I was building a premium system, so that is why I bought a water cooler. Next, if you're looking into a GPU, then don't get a 1050 or 1050 Ti unless you are on an extreme budget. Most people should get a 1060. It is the perfect middle ground and can handle all modern games at 1080p at 60 frames per second and it'll last at least a couple of years. If you want to future-proof yourself or have a 1440p monitor or 1080p ultrawide or even a triple monitor set up with three 1080p screens, then you should go with the 1070. The 1070 Ti is really just an unnecessary card and shouldn't have even been created. If you want 4K, 1440p, ultrawide or super smooth triple monitor gaming, then just go straight to a 1080. A 1080 Ti is really only for extreme builders or gamers who crave super smooth 4K gaming. As for SLI, just don't. It's really a dying technology 
and it's not worth it. As for AMD, get the 560 or 570 only if you are on a very tight budget. Get the 580 if you want almost identical performance to the 1060 or if you are getting a, a FreeSync monitor. The 580 and 1060 are pretty much the same, but the FreeSync monitors are much cheaper than G-Sync, so if you are getting a FreeSync monitor, then consider the 580 instead of the 1060. Finally, Vega is just not worth it. Nvidia is still a king in that range, so don't buy Vega. The motherboard really comes down to brand loyalty or budget. If you want the most premium board, then in my opinion, I think Asus makes the best motherboards. If you're getting a Ryzen 3 or Intel i3, then I recommend that you guys go with the budget motherboard from MSI, Gigabyte, or ASRock. If you guys are getting i5 or Ryzen 5, then I recommend that you guys still get MSI, Gigabyte, or ASRock motherboard because they provide you with everything you really need. If you guys are getting i7 or Ryzen 7, then you obviously want the best and you guys should look into the higher end MSI or Gigabyte boards or the entry level RG boards from ASUS. Don't buy a crazy extreme board like the ASUS Maximus or MSI Godlike motherboards because they are really pointless. Since I got an i7, I went with uh, an entry level ROG Strix board from ASUS. RAM is really overpriced right now, so I recommend you just get the cheapest RAM available at the specs that you are looking for. If you are getting Ryzen, just make sure that the RAM you choose is fully compatible with at the full speed with Ryzen. Only go with cool RAM like RAM with RGB like I did if you're getting an i7 or Ryzen 7. I found a good deal on Corsair RGB on Black Friday so I snatched it at $169 but otherwise just get normal RAM. Storage is also really simple. Most everyone should get a hard drive with a couple of terabytes of storage and SSD with about 250 gigabytes of space. For the hard drive, I recommend you guys get a Seagate Barracuda series or the Western Digital Blue hard drives. As for SSD, if you are on a budget, then get the cheapest one available because SSDs deliver quite similar performance and you probably wouldn't even notice the difference. Don't skimp out on the SSD and not buy one because it really is a day and night difference between a hard drive. NVMe is like an i7. It's really not necessary, but if you want the best, then just get the Samsung 960 EVO. Don't go for the Pro unless you actually are a professional who would take advantage of it. Next, get a power supply that is rated at 100 to 150 watts over your estimated wattage required. This should give plenty of overclocking headroom. As for brand, I would recommend EVGA or Corsair depending on whichever one is cheaper when you are buying. Windows, just get Windows Home. You really don't need Windows 10 Pro. Finally, the case. This is possibly the most subjective thing on this list. Unless you have an extreme build, I recommend you go with a normal case for $100 or less. There are some great cases that even have RGB and tempered glass in that range. If you have an extreme build, then yes, you should go with the case in a $100 to $200 range with crazy RGB or and tempered glass if that's what you want. Don't go for a case over $200 however. It really just does not make sense. It's literally just a box. Usually, case fans are not very useful. They're really just to give your build a bit more spice. Seriously, your case probably comes with enough fans and a negative or positive air pressure system inside your PC won't really do anything to your PC. So get case fans only if you want them. Next, outside your PC, you're going to need a monitor. I recommend to get a good monitor with 60Hz and 1080p with good colors. Any more is just for fun. Finally, peripherals are really just preference. You really only need a decent headset like the Logitech G430 which is actually really good for its price and there are plenty of budget friendly gaming mice and you really just need a Cooler Master mechanical keyboard for $80 to $90. Anything more than that is just a want and it's really just for fun. Just make sure that spending money on your peripherals does not make you have to downgrade any of your other PC parts. Well guys, if you guys are still here then thanks for sticking around. I hope that this helps you guys choose what parts you actually need or want. As always, if you have any questions, then make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I read all my comments, so I will respond to your questions to the best of my ability. That's all I have for you guys this time. If you guys liked the video, this video, then make sure to drop me a like. If you guys loved it and would like to see more videos just like this, then make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. 
But that's all I have for you guys this time. Until the next video, bye.